Well, hey, hey, it's me. Welcome to the, the Super Chat. I don't know. I guess there was a problem with the mic. If you can't hear me, if there's something wrong with the audio, will you please type in the chat? Uh, let me know that it's working. Is it working? Is anyone... Who's on? Is it on? Are we... Okay. Hey there, everybody. It's me, your buddy Dave, the host of the Dark Stuff channel on YouTube. Thanks a lot for checking out my latest video. Yeah, that was my attempt to show you uh, what I think of, <laughs> of YouTube live streams. They're always so ridiculous. Doesn't everyone you've ever seen start off like that where the mic doesn't work and they're asking people to say if it's working and is, am I on? Is this the guy? You know, it, it's just so dumb. Anyways. My attempt at humor to uh, start off a video that's not really much of anything, not really my normal type of video, just kind of an update video, including um, like kind of like a life update video, um, which I don't, you know, normally do. Before I get into some music-oriented talk, um, I guess I'll just give a little bit of a life update. So last week I resigned from my job. Uh, I've been working with uh, Berkshire Hathaway for the last number of years. I've been in the real estate industry for the last 15 years. Now, you hear the name Berkshire Hathaway, you know I'm from Omaha. Don't mistake and think I like work directly for Warren Buffett or something. I've never met the man. I mean, so I don't, I don't actually uh, know him, just FYI. But I made the decision a while ago to leave the industry that I've been in for 16 years because I've been really unhappy in it for the longest time. When you're making a lot of money at something, it's easy to overlook how much you dislike it. And so for a number of years there, I was doing pretty well financially and making good money. So even though I was, didn't like it, I, I was able to overlook it. But basically over the last few years with all the market fluctuation and everything, I realized that, that I just, I don't like this business and if I continue there's going to be no chance that I can ever try something different. I'm 52 years old already and starting over in a new career, not just like a new company in the same field, but I'm starting over completely from scratch is very difficult at any age, but let alone being 52. So it's a daunting task and I'm, I'm, I'm aware of, of how difficult it is. I've been casually looking on the side and it's, it's, it's frustrating. You know, I would love to, to make money off YouTube. I'd love to be one of those people that does videos every day. I mean, that would be awesome, you know, but I'm not anywhere near there. I mean, I, I have shown some serious growth on my channel. You know, in 2023, I made a conscious decision that I wanted to take the channel more seriously to whatever degree, whatever that, that meant. The way I interpreted it to mean was I was going to have a consistent posting every week. One video every week, no matter what. Because consistency leads to audience, leads to growth, etc. That's just basic for almost anything. I wanted to make my videos a little more topic oriented and less a little bit just turning on the camera and talking stream of consciously, uh, which I did for many, many years. A lot of those videos are great. And a lot of those videos, when I rewatch them, I cringe because of just the rambling and I can't believe that I couldn't have tightened it up in editing. Why is this video 24 minutes? This could have been eight, you know, something like that. So I feel like I've, I've been putting together some pretty quality content over this year of 2023. I've had some stuff that I'm actually proud of, not just like, yeah, that's pretty good, you know? I don't know what's gonna happen with this channel or with whatever, but like, what's funny to me is when I see people especially in the vinyl community that are doing it, but it's other people too who are like so, it just like I would never monetize my channel ever, ever, you know, I, that's just so ridiculous. Why? Do you know that when you signed up for YouTube or Gmail or whenever you started, I signed up for YouTube before it was even owned by Google, but back then you made an agreement that they give you a free channel in exchange. They can put advertising on it for anything they want at any time they want. And they do. So my channel's not monetized, but every time I go and try and watch one of my own videos, I see an ad, and I probably do on yours too. Guess what though? If you have, if you refuse to monetize, all the money goes to them. So if you don't have to do anything different other than just do what you're doing already, but they send you a couple of bucks on the side, like why would, why would you oppose that?
Where uh, That's the baffling thing to me because it's being done anyways. You have no control. If you want to move over to Vimeo or Twitch or something, I mean, I don't know. Go somewhere else. But So, yeah, I welcome the whole monetization thing. I mean, my channel's grown. I have enough subscribers. I don't have enough watch time quite yet. So, you know, I'm getting there. But the idea that I would object to, to someone... You know, it's not. I'm not making anyone else pay for it. It's advertisers are already paying and they're already putting their ads on my videos. Why shouldn't I get some of that? That's my that's my question. And so, for people who oppose the very concept of monetization, is it because you think your behavior will be altered in 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 exchange for more money? Like, so for example, your your integrity is very pure, and we all are, I'm sure. But are you worried that if you do a video about a certain group and you see that it gets a lot of views and you make a little change on it, that all of a sudden you're going to start skewing your channel to start doing that? Well, that's on you, man. That's not on YouTube. That's not on capitalism. That's not on monetization. That's not on any. That's on you. That's my feeling on it. I'm going to move on. So my point on that was just to say that I am making some big life changes and... Um, We'll see. I mean, I would, I, I, I'd move out of Nebraska in a heartbeat, you know, and move somewhere else. I do have a house to sell, and that's a problem. I was just in the industry, and I know uh, from working in it that the market sucks right now. Interest rates are high, and it, there's a lot of volatility. And now, real estate markets are very localized, so national trends usually don't mean anything. But uh, it, it is, in general, interest rates are high for everyone, and it is kind of a bad time to sell a house. So I'm sort of screwed in that respect. So in a couple days, I am filming uh, the next episode of our book Rock and Roll Book Club. Okay, and I did a little community post on it, but I don't know if anyone ever reads those. So the book this time is Belinda Carlisle's book, Lips Unsealed. It is her memoir. Now, this came out in 2010, so the chances are a lot of you maybe have read it if you're Go-Go's fans or would have the opportunity between now and maybe two weeks when the video's ready to have done it. So the last book club we did was for Susanna Hoff's uh, debut novel, This Bird Has Flown. And that was a new release at the time, so not a lot of people had read it yet. And book club assumes that you've already read the book. So we didn't have a ton of interaction and comments and stuff from when we posted the video because people were just there reading it. Now, this is a book that came out in 2010. So it's been out for a while. And uh, I'm hoping that we get a little more interaction on this one. This is going to be a regular thing on the channel. I'm hoping for maybe every other month we can do one. I haven't bought really any new vinyl since the last vinyl update video that I did last month. Except for this one record, which is, this is the best of dope folks records. This is a underground and obscure uh, hip hop label that puts out unreleased or sometimes barely released uh, rap 12 inches from 1991 to 1999. So it's rare and unreleased tracks from the US hip hop underground, 1991 to 1999. Dope Folks is based in Milwaukee. It's run by a good friend of mine that I knew from back in my record store days in the 90s, Chris Shulist. And um, I just recently bought that sort of best of comp. So uh, that's my newest record that I bought. Everything else has been just CDs for the radio show. Uh, I do have coming up, uh, I did pre-order the replacements Tim box set, so as soon as I get that, obviously there'll be a video on it, no question. One thing that I've learned about uh, YouTube and the analytics is that my most popular videos are not the ones where I go to concerts and film clips from it. They're in fact some of the lowest ones, but I don't care. I enjoy going to these shows and I do those videos and I think they're good. And so if the odd general audience doesn't get to it, I'm blaming that on the algorithm because frankly, those are good videos. But I do have a lot of good shows coming up on the September 14th. I got the drive by truckers, the 19th. I got the swans, the 20th. Well, Yola Tengo was supposed to be on the 20th. That got postponed because Georgia uh, needs knee surgery. Uh, September 28th, MSSV, that's Mike Watts' new group. 10-6, The Good Life. 10-9, The Church, the Australian band. Uh, October 19th, Rat Boys. October 21st, Samia, very excited about seeing her. The 23rd, Wilco. November 12th, Henry Rollins doing Spoken Word. The 17th, Speedy Ortiz is back. The 21st, Atmosphere. And then October, or I'm sorry, December 14th is a uh, legendary thrash band, Exodus, coming back. Never seen them. So uh, I would like to uh, see that. So that's just kind of a taste of what's coming up. So 
Uh, just felt like giving a little bit of an update, you know, and uh, keeping you guys informed. You know, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you got something out of this and this didn't bore the shit out of you. Take care. Bye-bye.